Hey folks, quick disclaimer about Greasy Says, my new show about being a game developer for 15 years who's brown. Okay, Greasy Says contains explicit language, adult situations, and viewer discretion is strongly advised. Right, Greasy Says is supposed to be a comedic take on what it's like to be in the gaming industry from my perspective, but I'm not out here trying to make people feel uncomfortable just for the sake of it. So, to sum it up, I have a potty mouth. Don't let your kids listen to this shit. And kings and queens above 18 only. Let's try that. All right. Lay is. Haha, <laughs> let's get this party started. Professional. Lazy says. Where are you going? What you doing? What are you up to? Where are you going? What you doing? Where are you going? What you doing? What are you up to? Where are you going? What you doing? Where are you going? What you doing? What are you up to? Where are you going? What you doing? What up? What up, greasy people? It's your boy Greasy. Once again. Back with another episode of Greasy Says. This show is about me, a brown-skinned game developer extraordinaire who comes to you every week to talk about things that are happening in the gaming industry, random thoughts about seagulls and whistlers, and other things that are important. And I'd like to thank you all for coming back. I know I'm late. I know this episode of Greasy Says is late. And that's just going to happen sometimes. You know what I mean? I, I always talk about you need to give yourself a break. You need to step back when things are a little bit too complicated and give yourself a chance. Give yourself permission to just check out of some of the things you have to do. And this week, this last... Fuck, man. This, y'all lucky y'all got a fucking podcast last week. Uh, last time. Y'all didn't know what was going on. But the shit ramped up. This week, got a lot on my mind, a lot going on with the family, a lot going on with my son, my amazing son. Uh, he's doing great, but, you know, he had some he had some issues. You know what I mean? Just saw it go. Speaking of kids, let me ask y'all this. Y'all ever notice how, like, all right, so as a, as a, as a dad, as a parent, I'm trying to teach my kid how to share and shit. You know what I mean? When little, well, I got a funny story after that. But when little Timmy come over or whatever, you know, share your toys, share your stuff. You know what I mean? We always telling our kids to share. But we, uh, the rest of us, us adults, shit, once you become a teenager, ain't nobody sharing with nobody. We never share in real life, man. We keep everything to ourselves. We ain't sharing shit. So we always telling our kids, share this, share that, share this. And then they go out into the real world and they try to share. A motherfucker just steal the shit from them. Or oh, you soft. Or oh, you, 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 you goofy. Like, what the fuck? You a pushover if you share it. You know what I mean? And as we get older, we share even less. Because we know it's like, you know, you got to keep the shit, keep all the chips for you. So why am I lying to my kid telling him he need to share when it's like, yo, now nah, you could push Timmy down and take his potato chips. That's fine. That's how the world works. I know, right? It's sad. I don't want to teach him that shit, but that's how it is out there, man. It's not all sharing and fucking raspberries out there. It ain't cranberries and raspberries out there, man. Sticks and stones out there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't know, man. I might not keep lying to my kid about you got to share. Everybody shares. You got to share. It's like, you don't feel like sharing. All right, cool, man. You, sometimes you share. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're feeling generous. Sometimes you don't. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. That'll make you a bad person. So hey, I'm gonna work on that shit. Yo, 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 watching us. Yo, watching that there She Hulk. Man. Or I should say woman. That shit is dope. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've watched uh, yeah, a lot of like Marvel movies and uh, a handful of series because that shit don't really hold me usually. This shit holds me, man. This shit is hilarious. Who who came? Oh, well, I know who came up 
with the idea. It's uh, Joanna Chen, right? Is that her name? Let me check. Y'all, he got this name so wrong. Y'all don't even know how wrong he got the name. He got the name so wrong. He just threw some names together. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. It's a joke. When you hear what he says, it's a joke. It's not even close. It's not even close. Look, 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 look. Damn, I had that shit so wrong. It's Jessica Gao, uh, who also apparently wrote uh, the the Pickle Rick episode on Rick and Morty. So this 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 lady is is a beast when it comes to writing some funny ass shit. And this show is hilarious. Back to back laughs, yo. Shit don't take itself too seriously. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's got a Harvey Birdman attorney at law vibe to it. I'm definitely sure. I'm sure they got some inspiration from that shit. And I like, yo, I was thinking, well, I was thinking a couple thoughts about She-Hulk, right? You know, you know, when you watch a movie, like an action movie or a superhero movie or whatever, that's been written by a dude. How like sometimes the female characters are just lackluster. They're just kind of like these stereotypes or these like tropes of what women really are. And to real women, it's kind of ridiculous. It's like you just took one dimension of my personality and that's your whole fucking character. It's hilarious to see them do the exact same thing when it's the other way around. All the male characters in fucking She-Hulk are just shells. They're just like mannequins they have no soul they are just tropes it's really funny totally acceptable right i mean if it's acceptable that way is totally acceptable the other way too right mm. Mm. anyway i love that fucking show i'm gonna keep watching it i highly recommend you check it out what was the other thing i was gonna say oh i don't know why i wrote this down but i said she hulk has a black exploitation vibe hmm what did I mean by that when I wrote that down? Maybe because it's like... It's like... Sort of being exploitative with like the powerful woman in a law position. Kind of thing. And like she twerking in the fucking... In the office, in the law office. And just being, you know, all crazy with it. Is that what I was getting at? I don't know. I wrote that shit down. I must have been watching it. I might have been blazed. I might have had a couple in me. I don't know. But I, apparently, I think She Hulk has a black exploitation vibe. Yeah. Let me know if you think I'm crazy, I guess. I probably am. But all superhero movies should be comedies, right? Think about all the dope ass fucking superhero movies. Uh, Thor Ragnarok. Hilarious. Killer. Killer movie. Fucking. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, comedy, hilarious, great. She-Hulk, hilarious, great. As soon as you try to go all serious, like all them Avenger movies and shit, I'm like, whatever, man, you're a big-ass purple dude. I, I, I can't take you destroying the universe seriously with your fucking Cthulhu chin. You know, your ball, your, your 70-year-old balls for a chin. And I mean, don't take that shit so serious. Like, like every time you see uh, Black Widow, right? Black Widow's her name. In a scene, it's like, damn, why you why are you taking this shit so serious, dog? You're, you're a superhero. This shit is ridiculous and stupid. Can we please crack some jokes? So yeah, I appreciate I, I appreciate how She-Hulk is just a straight up comedy, and I only want to be watching comedic superhero shit from now. If the shit ain't The Boys, which has comedy in it straight up, but if that shit ain't like raw like that, not even come at me with no fucking superhero shit. No more. For real. All right, hold up. Can we talk about Taylor Page? If you don't know, Taylor Page is the rapper on the Kendrick Lamar song. Uh, what the fuck is the name of that song again? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? What are you up to? What are you doing right now? Oh my God. We're doing nothing together. This is great. Wow. We Cry Together. One of the most powerful songs on that whole goddamn record, man. Like, I like, like I had, like, a hard time listening to that song when I first heard it. I was like, yo, this is raw emotion. I felt like I was watching a play. This shit just felt so real and so raw. That shit was like, it was, it was like watching theater listening to that fucking song. 
so Taylor Page is a is a huge reason why that song is so powerful. Her performance on that song is unfathomable, unbelievable, top tier shit, man. Like Oscar award winning fucking raps, yo. Just the way she delivered it with all that emotion, it was just mm, perfect. And then she she star in the video too. Is that what happened? That's her in the video, right? Yeah, she's starring in this shit. She's starring in the video. She cute too. She's starring in the video. And they did it live. It wasn't like they the video is like a completely unique take it's like a it's like a it's a show you watching a play they performing this shit live in one take yo taylor page you have my utmost highest respect you are a g in my opinion a fucking g if you haven't listened to that record yet you should and then my final thought before we kick off the episode is fuck election time Okay, I know some of y'all really up in your politics and you love your fucking politics and you you fucking this guy said that, this girl said that, and you 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 gotta pick sides and put your elephant on your car or your fucking what's the other one? A bear or some shit? On your car, fly your put your fucking Obama stickers on or whatever, whatever. I don't give a fuck about none of that. Fuck election time. How the fuck is it still okay? That these cats could just hit you up, just text you and be like, vote for this motherfucker from some random number. Well, how you get my number, dog? I didn't sign no list. Sometimes I was begin, well, it's probably my wife fault because I, I was begin text messages for my wife about vote for this democratic thing in this election. I'm like, dog, I don't need this. This is all spam. How is it okay that they could just spam people? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like panhandling. That's basically what they do when they do, they panhandling via text get off me man hate fucking election season god damn remember you can always <laughs> link up with me on social media if you disagree with any of my takes uh you can find me on instagram at greasy says you can find me on tiktok under greasy says you can find me on twitter under the underscore mq nope uh and check out my music on uh spotify under mq Bandcamp, all that shit give me some streams you know what i'm saying uh yeah 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 let's kick off the show let's pick a key we are we we gonna actually do it right this time today today's key today's key today's key is today's today's key today's key today's key is where you going what you doing what are you up to? Where are you going? What you doing? Where are you going? What you doing? What are you up to? Where are you going? What you doing? Yeah, yeah. Where are you going? What are you doing? What are you up to? Where are you going? What you doing? Yeah, yeah. Y'all remember the uh, the Xbox, the, what was it? It was a 360, right? Was it the 360? Yeah, it was a 360. Back in the days, the Xbox 360s, 360s. You know what I mean? With classics like Gears of War, the first one, which was the best one, period. Or uh, classics like Viva Piñata. Goddamn amazing game. That was basically unfinishable by stupid ass people like me i couldn't figure out how to beat that shit you know what i mean i, I might have them worms have sex do their little dance and like have like a couple of chickens have do that but beyond that i wasn't getting none of them like crazy ass candy wolves and fucking mooses and shit i couldn't fuck with none of that but you remember there was a device for the xbox 360 right when Cameras started going crazy for uh, for next gen consoles at the time. The Connect, you remember that, right? 
connect. It was like a, it looked like a little sound bar, but it was really a camera, actually a couple of cameras. And it came with some like, you know, mediocre Wii style games with, you know, motion control games where you stand in front of the camera and wiggle your arms and you're swimming or like you're, you're smacking balls back and forth between you and a buddy or something. Um, essentially like the Wii, but you're not holding the controllers, you're doing it all with a camera. I worked on some games that for the Kinect, you know what I mean? It's, and then like explored all of those various camera based uh peripherals. But there was a weird thing that I that I discovered in my travels with the Kinect that I held on to. And I just wanted to talk about it. So the Kinect, I don't know technically exactly how it works. Somebody smarter than me could probably explain it better. But the Kinect would like you know, do video of you, like capture video of you, but it would also capture like other data. Uh, like it would process light in different ways. But during my time using the Kinect and developing on the Kinect, a, a weird thing would happen whenever uh, a brown skinned person would try to use the Kinect. Anybody else out there ever experienced this little uh, technical difficulty? Like, you might be there with your homie, let's call him Gabriel. Uh, and Gabriel says, hey, come on, let's play some Connect. Just jump in and, and it'll recognize you. It'll see you. Just step right in front of the camera. You say, all right, Gabriel, let's play some of this game you got. So you step in front of the camera. Nothing happens. It's still showing just Gabriel being recognized you wave you know so they might have gone wrong i don't know maybe this is am i blending in with the with the wall maybe i don't know i'm wearing a shirt i don't know so you wave nothing nothing the connect refuses to acknowledge you how do you think that makes you feel how does that make you feel not to be seen by a fucking xbox peripheral for real man the xbox connect would have a hard time seeing black people. I've tested the shit. I saw the shit firsthand. I saw the shit happen. It would be like, you got to be in a bright ass room. Okay. How come you could see the white person in a bright ass room? Don't they kind of blend in with the background? How come you can't see my brown ass when I'm in the bright ass room? What's up with that, Mr. Connect? Huh? Huh? What, what lines are you trying to draw in the sand here, Mr. Connect? For real. There would be times when, I, when like, we would bring in dark-skinned people to test with the Kinect and it would not recognize them. It would score them poorly. You know what I mean? What the fuck? Nobody at Microsoft ever tested and brought in some brown people to be like, yo, this camera could see these motherfuckers or what? So that got me thinking, like, yo, was the Kinect racist? Was the Kinect the first racist peripheral? The first... The first... The first parastrial. White supremacist peripheral? Is that possible? Is that, a, is, that, is that a check mark in history that we forgot to check? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I think there should be an investigation. I mean, the connects just a camera, right? So are like all cameras just kind of racist? Because we darker, so it can't see us as good, so it just ignores us. Is that why, you know, you could never get the filtering right for brown people? Because cameras are just straight up racist? Hold up. Hold up. Aren't our eyes just cameras, basically? Like, our eyes are basically cameras. Like, cameras are modeled after our eyes. And if cameras are naturally racist, and we have cameras as eyes... Hmm... I think you just bummed me out. Yeah, me too, bro. What you play, what you play, what you play, what, what you play, what you playing? What are you playing? What you playing? Pimpin'. I've been playing so much, so much good shit. I've been playing so many games. Uh, I just, I got a piecemeal amount to y'all. Uh, recently, I couldn't help myself. Uh, I was going to wait until the, the sweet October months of horror 
oh, the best time of year to play some scary games. But I, I couldn't wait. I couldn't do it. So I had to crack the seal on Resident, Resident Evil 8. It's 8, right? Village, V-I-L-L. Yeah, 8. 8. Dog. All right. I mean, if you haven't played it, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but you know how it go with these new Resident Evils. It's first person. It's, it's still survival horror, but the controls are finally useful. Finally. Uh, it's, it's, it's way more immersive than the original Resident Evils. Just, it just is. Resident Evil 7 was a goddamn game changer. Mostly due to, I mean, let's face it, it was that PT demo. Uh... That really set things off in that direction without Kojima and and what's his face doing that that demo. I don't know if we would have been where we are. Maybe they were doing the same experiments at the same time. I don't know. But we definitely OPT for where Resident Evil is today. And this one, man, they have improved so many things. Uh, the character models have gotten incredibly good. There was something really weird. Like the, my favorite character in the first uh, in Resident Evil Seven. I, I call it the first new Resident Evil because it's like the first in this slew of Resident Evil first person games. But the main like the main character's love interest Mia in that game, even though the model was amazing, it just had this weird sort of robotic bobblehead kind of feel, where it, the fidelity was very high on the model. But the way it was animated and the way some of the physics work, it just felt like you were, you could see somebody holding strings above it, kind of moving this thing around. Felt very like not lifelike, not realistic. It didn't have uh, soft edges, so to speak. But in this one, they've, they've managed to make it feel really, really human. Like all these characters look really good. High fidelity models, high detail models, but they're animated so much better. There's a lot of subtlety to the animation. Probably the way they did mocap because there's some hidden scenes or behind the scenes footage <coughs> of the way they mocapped it. And they mocapped everything down to like tables and chairs in the room uh, that need to be moved during a scene. Like they built special contraptions to drag people away if they were being dragged away by a monster or whatever. So it's probably like the mocap studio or the mocap process was greatly improved. Um. So yeah, that, that part of it is incredible. One of the loudest fucking games ever, man. From an audio perspective, I was constantly like, God damn, I got to turn this shit down. I was playing in headphones for maximum fair uh, factor. Um, but like a lot of the dialogue was so hot in the mix in that game. And I get why, because you got to make it, you know, it's a story driven game. So it has to cut through every element of your mix, no matter what your mix is doing. I get that. But it was like abrasive at times. It was wild. Great creature sound design and stuff. Um, particularly the werewolves. They were killer, killer. Really well sound designed. And really well modeled too. Like, yeah. What an experience. I, play, I played the shit out of it. I beat it like three times already. I'm trying to get every single challenge. Every single achievement. Um, I kind of know it by heart at this point. Uh, I just recently got the unlimited rocket launcher or grenade launcher, like, cheat. So I'm just trying to get all the rest of the stuff in that game. It, I'm definitely going to try to 100% that game if I can. Some of them seem, some of the challenges seem like I got to do a fucking math problem to figure this out, but I'm going to try. Super fun game. Resident Evil still at the top of the list in terms of survival horror games. They haven't lost a single step. Um, and they keep coming up with dope fucking characters like Domitresque everybody was like all about that character and, and she's crazy and all her daughters are crazy like a really cool idea terrifying giant woman you know what I mean um, terrifying giant white woman that's even scarier like with like you know no responsibility at all and like can drink your blood it's pretty that's a terrifying Karen right there uh but there were other characters too, like um, I found the, uh, there's like a mutated character. I can't remember their name, but they were like, 
I didn't expect that character to show up in the mix, and I was like, oh my god, this is fucking nasty. It was it was dope. Oh, and I will tell you one of the f- most fucked up scenes. I'm just saying, I'm gonna say, baby. That's all I'm gonna say. But yeah, round of applause for Resident Evil Village. Fucking top tier shit. I might even play it again when it gets spooky out, just for the hell of it. Turn on a fog machine in my room and just freak myself out again. Uh, nah, but I got I got amnesia. I got the new amnesia game lined up for Halloween, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I got a I got a listener comment that is hilarious. <laughs> Uh, last on the last episode of Greasy says, I was talking about uh, fuck Lewis's, fuck Lewis's, <laughs> talking about how Lewis's are always pieces of shit. And I was like, yo, at the end, I, like at the end of that thought, I was like, yo, even Lewis Lane <laughs> was a piece of shit because she was like just having, uh, you know, leading Clark Kent on, treating him like a fucking cuck and everything. And she was like an asshole for doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> then the homie writes in, my dude, Lois Lane. Not Lewis. Lois. <laughs> hey. And then they continue with, and there are iterations of Superman where Clark and Lois are married and have a son. <laughs> Yo, I love how fucking wrong I got every part of that idea. First, I got her name wrong, and then I got, like, I I know nothing about fucking Superman. And I was just like, yeah, this is all versions of Superman. He's just a fucking pushover baby simping for this fucking lady. But he's not. Apparently, they're married and have a son in other versions of Superman. So consider me schooled. (laughs) I mean, that's what it takes to be greasy, man. You just got to say some shit without understanding much of anything. That's all it takes. That's how you become a greasy person. It's just, you just let it fly. You let it fly and you pick up the pieces later. And that's all I'm trying to teach. That's all I'm trying to, you know, impress upon people is just take a swing. You might be wrong. You might be really fucking wrong. But take a swing. Thank you for writing in. Thank you for correcting my dumb ass. I appreciate it. Feel free to do that at any point on any show. I love that. I think it's really funny when I'm wrong. Uh, hit me up on social media. Uh, Greasy says on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, or uh, Twitter under the MQ. Uh, oh, wait, no, it's M- MQ, dat M- whatever it is. It's is. I'm on Twitter under MQ. Go, go fucking hit me up and correct me. Keep writing in. I appreciate y'all. All right, let's wrap it up with a little bit of. Medicate and meditate. This week, I want to tell you that you're not invisible. Fuck a connect, you're not invisible. I see you. If you're not seen. Doesn't mean that you're invisible And if I can't hear you It doesn't mean that you're invisible And if you can't hear me Doesn't mean that you're invisible And if I don't answer Yeah It doesn't mean that you're invisible
in the time between me recording that last medicate and meditate and now my kid woke up in the middle of the night and it seems like he's sick again like you got a little cold or something that's how it is y'all that is how crazy the greasy said greasy says podcast schedule is you just squeeze it in where you can and you hope for the best swing for the fences if you want to be greasy just fucking swing because you ain't got much time left man greasy people thank you for coming out Remember to like, subscribe, do all the social media things that make us thrive and make us weak at the same damn time. And until next time, it's me, Greasy. And I'm checking out with the room key. Good night. I'm checking out with the room key. Good night. No need for a nightcap. Good night. See you fucking tomorrow. Good night. Where you been? Where are you going? What are you up to? Latest.